Good morning, team. We are at the top of the family raft tower today. Whew, it's gonna be a nice, windy, possibly rainy day. We are working on the Vanstone conveyor today. This is a hybrid conveyor. And I've got our friends from Vanstone here today to help us out. So what's happening here is, if you see this sprocket here, it's got some cracks in it, right? So we're gonna replace this. And the way they've set it up now, so you don't have to take everything apart, it comes into two pieces. <clears throat> so you'll see it's in two pieces here. Okay, so basically all you'll do is you'll cut off the old one and you'll sandwich the new one on there. Today we're going through the process with them so we know how to do it correctly. It's also for our friends that have Vanstone conveyors, they can see exactly how we're doing it. So join us today, we're gonna have fun. Okay, so what we've done so far to prep it is at the very bottom, right before it hits the sprockets on the bottom, we've disconnected the two chains on there. Alright, what he's doing now is he's going down the tower. He's on the there's a cleat right there. He's gonna tie off a chain fall chain fall to the next cleat that's gonna be able to give us reduce the pressure off this chain all the way down. We don't want to have to go chasing it. It's a lot of work if we have to do that. <clears throat> so he's just tying it off, ensuring that it's not going to fall on us when we disconnect up here. <clears throat> You might not be able to see it, but it's right there, right before the lower cleat, <clears throat> or excuse me, the lower uh, sprockets. He's disconnected there, so um, we're not going to have any pullback whenever we try and pull the back side of the chain. Because you got to remember, the chain goes not only on the front, but on the back. <clears throat> back here. Yeah. All right, now he's got the, you can see it right there, that chain falls strapped to the next, to the next cleat. So now we're gonna get, that's on the front. Now we're gonna get the backside cleat. So we've got all this chain and sprocket is free. So we don't have to deal with the weight on it. Nope. 
what it is is now because I forgot for cleat placement, we're instantly gonna grab a ratchet strap for this one because all the sides right there. Okay. Right, so okay. I'm kind of the same because it's not for recording. All right, team. Now that we've secured two cleats now we're just going to bring this last one up so we can have all this feed in order to work and we're not going to be pinched down with this uh with the chain ah look at that nice yeah so now we're nice and loose hmm Need a little grease. There we go. <laughs> Might need a flathead. Okay, now we've got the two sprockets exposed. I can get... That's a good point, all right. All right, team, so we'll... <clears throat> when we're strapping these, when we're strapping the uh, chain, we wanna ensure that we're not pulling against the chain this way onto the track. So that's why he picked a lower, a really lower cleat so he can pull straight up instead of going against the track. Now we've got this one, it's not too far. This one right here, that one's not too far um, up this way. So he was okay with doing it this way, but he'd want it a little lower. But for this application, we're okay where it's sitting. So again, we don't wanna, we don't wanna keep it where the track is being pulled this way. Uh, or again, or we want the chain being pulled across the track. We want to make sure it's straight up whenever we're doing this and hanging it. Pull the brake off. The motor's still been running for another two years after that. Yeah. So next, we're pulling off the sprockets. So 916 backer and and a nut. You want one of these guys to jump in there, Andrew? Please. Either way, I'm just uh, I'm here to teach you. Is what I was told. So either way, I can stand back and teach or I can do the teach. <laughs> but let me tell you, which, which one makes me feel bad? Yeah? Standing around doing nothing. Well, that's why I'm... <laughs> well, we're here all to learn. Don't worry. Yeah. We're all here to learn. <sighs> At least I am. I don't know what these guys are here for. There you go. That's what his thumb does. When working at high like this, you don't want to be dropping washers and nuts off. Yeah. So, yeah. You got another box bin? What's wrong with this it? one's rounded out yeah. uh, and, uh, and rounded out. All the way to the left of my bags, there's two black bags, one rounded wrenches, out. one sockets. Want to grab the wrenches? Rounded out. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. <clears throat> it's like it's been hitting something. That's what I'm worried about. Watch it. Okay, so you can see that this is a split unit as well, but um, we, we, we're gonna have to cut it off in order to get it out without having to take apart the entire uh, assembly up here, which that's why we're here. Jesse's gonna have to have the cutter and the uh, yeah. everything else. Or I think Andrew's gonna use some percussive maintenance, right? <laughs> Everything's a hammer. Everything's a hammer. You got that special spray of yours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grab the, grab the, uh, yeah, penetrating oil. Not only is it really good, it smells good. Yeah, it smells wonderful. Use it as a cologne. <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> I swear, wait. Yeah. You're like, wow, it smells really good. It works great. It's actually uh, very surprising. It works great. This is a, it's a good product. Like we really like too, it. Huh? So it's
So on the bolts and nuts, he's putting little anti -seas. Oh, Ooh, yummy. Bigger guy with better the job. <laughs> now did you mark that or was it already marked the factory the factory marks will it, mark huh? it so okay. that you know so you'll see it's got marks on it so you know exactly how to put it together and now he's just gonna do a quick dry fit make sure we're lining up here that lines up that's gonna line up with Oh no. Oh no, no, no. You stuck that side? Watch yourself. Mm -hmm. Can we get a little tap down here with a hammer? There we go. So, what I'm doing now is just trying to make sure the key stock is lined up. Making sure it's not too long for the application. So you'll see a little bit sticking out. It actually locks in to your out, your drive plate. Yeah, that makes sense. So we want to make sure that we get all of those lined up. And that our holes line up all around. It looks good. Just now, we can switch these. Hold this. Now the bolts you put in, those are for the outside, correct? No, these are the inside ones. Okay. Yeah, the you, outside ones are gonna be shorter. The, the outside, outside ones are shorter. Ones. They're in the bag, right yeah. here under me. I was just putting these as the temporary. Just oh, right. Papers. Just to make sure where everything's lining up. Now we can get the rest of the longer ones, the shorter ones in on this. The shorter ones, we'll take the two flat washers out and wash them inside. So now I'm just lining up the sprocket to the track. Okay. Because I also know that the cleat spacing is 34 and 3 quarters center to center. So I'm just getting a rough estimate to line this one up. Now we'll put this one in. Because once you tighten it, it's so hard to move them. They kind of want to get everything lined up in place, make sure everything's working, and then tighten it down. Okay. So now we're going to get to this side. Exactly. Uh, you want bolts from the inside out. Whoops. That's what we're going to do. So that, make sure that locks on there. That key key so now we got to make sure we get this one right there. How this lines up. Simple mistake. Simple solution. It's underneath the rebar.
Stocks lined up. We're in. We're in our drive plates with a key stock, our sprocket, and our chain savers. So we hold it as one unit, and we want to get as close as we can to the track for center. So we're lining up this and this yeah. together. For, okay, correct. But also, we want to make sure that uh, maybe over time this has moved. We want to get our tape measure and make sure center to center on track and cleats is 34 and three quarter. 34, 34, 34 and three quarter. That's how I remember it for this. So let me grab a tape measure. So you said 34 to three quarters center 34 to center. and three quarter is center to center okay for your track for your sprockets it, that's what the cleat is designed to center okay to center. that makes sense so i just take an outside to outside i'll let you know that we're actually 34 and three quarter yeah yeah because yep. i'm measuring outside to outside center to center all right cool. oh that makes sense yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay make it easier yeah. for yourself Everyone's like Thought it's center to center. I was like, yeah, but your eyeball in the center. Right, yeah, it's I got you. Yeah, messing with it. That makes sense. So we know we're lined up with our track. Mm -hmm. We know we're at our proper dimension. So now we'll start from the inside out. We're just gonna tighten it up, let it lock into place. So when you do it, I like to give a little bit of pressure, cl clamp it a little bit. Make sure it pulls yeah. tight. It pulls yeah. Seat. And so then saying, we'll clamp it. hang a little loose. Correct. Okay. And then you, you have, have a, a wobble. wobble. Correct. Yeah. Now that's locked in. Now we're gonna want to go ahead and set our set screws. Make sure those get tightened back up with the Allen key. Underneath this, we're going to put a quarter. Try to get it. Want to see if we can sit down? All right, hold it together. Mm -hmm. So you did the inside, now he's doing the inside. The or the outside, outside. outside. sorry. Inside yeah. first, outside. Yeah, there you go. Right, you did the outside first, you wouldn't get a good squeeze. To right. Yeah, you want back. it inside, it, out, yeah, right. press it. Okay. Right, I got a hold of it. Uh, this, uh, above it, the middle yeah. one. The one that he's crapped on. Right? Yeah. Yeah, just get the cut off wheel. Yeah. Uh, the start is that we just want to barely get to here and make sure all the slack is here. Make sure no slack. No, no slack on top. On right. top. Got it. We want just enough for it to, to meet up with it. Yep. So there, slack on. 
on the bottom. Yeah, just push it in because you'll be able to pull the other one up towards you. Okay, what he was saying is he wants all the slack to be on the on the bottom one. That way we know we're not off the link. Correct. That we should still be the same equal distance. Correct. Do you want to hammer in right now? Or? Because if you're off a if you're off a cleat here, you're gonna be all cattywampus on the chain. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure you're straight on the cleat, on it. Correct. And you want to make sure you really support this side. A two by four slip. No, you don't want to cover this because it's gonna pop out. So you just want to cover on the downside. The best thing to do is I put my foot right there. Yeah, yeah, that's what we do. Stand up there. Yeah. And it'll. Yeah, I'll show the guys, show the team on this side once we get there. So what Andrew's saying is when you're doing this, you want to put something hard on this side. Like a lot a of foot. pressure, otherwise the whole chain will move. Right. Versus it clamping down. One second. Okay. Like now, I'm going to get on this side to hold it very well. So I want to hold something there and my hand. Go ahead. There it goes. Yeah. Now, now you have that lift full pop seat. out. Yeah. Correct. Right. Yeah, if you're not seeing this, yeah, go ahead, Frank. Talk about it. Yeah. This little nip doesn't pop out right here. Mm -hmm. It's not fully locked. Because it's beveled, so it almost comes out and then re-expands to lock it in. Correct. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's gotta or, be all the way or up, if yeah. you see any gaps in yeah. between your chain links, okay. it's a sure sign that maybe you did get it through, but it might be broken now, right, and there's right. and you're seeing that gap. Oh, okay. It's right. a good way yeah. to put it. Okay. Nice. So yeah. two things to look for when that. Okay, team. Now we're just doing the opposite of what we, what Andrew did earlier. What he did was, uh, so you'll see he pulled this chain up to bring the slack up on this one. Now he's just gonna lay that slack down. Nice and easy. Nice. Now, now it should be able to let it roll back. Wow. Maybe. Come on. Oh, first we There we go. There we go, that one's off. So as far as equipment, what we use in gentlemen, we used a uh, ratchet strap. We got two chain falls. Release this chain fall. No, reverse it. There you go. No, this is it. Now we should have some decent tension. Yep, yeah, see? It's not moving no more. We're all tightened up now. But we still have one more chain fall. If you see it right there, Andrew's walking down the tower to get take care of that one. And remember, whatever you bring up to your to your to your tower and onto your conveyor, you need to take it because if you don't, possibility that's going to get caught in the chain or on a on the, one of the rafts or or the cleat, and that's uh, that's a no go. Make sure you're taking everything with you that you brought up, and if. Uh, you have extra parts that you're broke, make sure you take those down with you too. And as always, stay safe. Make sure you're tied off. And you just got a double harness. Yeah, you gotta be double harnessed when you're climbing freestyle. Correct. Okay. Try not to do, do not do this by yourself. Make sure you have a buddy with you. Safety first, team, safety first. What you see there, babe? So your UHMW is actually worn out. Mm -hmm. so Good now, to get that replaced. Now if it's loose, now it's you hitting can see the it's bar. That metal, right. And that's just going to shave down that plastic okay. chain. Right and there. that's an easy replacement. So easy replacement. I think it's four bolts. You'll met. It's usually a cut to measure okay. from us. Oh, okay. And also the new ones we have actually come around the sprocket. So that it actually cannot dip in at all. Nice. You'll notice that cleat, the weight of it, sometimes it has that yes, dip. Yes, yes. Yeah. The new ones doing. actually come around the sprocket. Nice. So a smooth transition. It, oh. it makes the conveyor like 20% quieter. No, the yeah. fantastic. Yeah, we noticed that. That's That makes a lot of sense. Especially when we have the blue wraps on them. Right. 
Okay, same thing. Get the pin lined up. So now, I'll put your foot there. You put your foot right here. Uh, you want to put it like right on that edge. Yep. There you go. And then you want to give it nice, even pressure hit. You have to hit it a little bit harder than yeah, that. Yeah, go, 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 go. Make Hard it take hit. a beat. Okay. Check your other side. There's no gap, it lifts out, it's good. Okay, I'm gonna actually get inside so we can see So just for demonstration purposes, can we try, can I just see one where it doesn't go all the way through? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We'll see it here in a second. So then if you notice what he did, he's keeping them all in the same position because it won't work the other way. You can't go this way, you have to go this way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is where it's a little bit more challenging because it's not easy of an angle here. But I usually put it up in and then because this will twist. Right. Then you up. can line it up. So if I don't put pressure. Actually pop in. <laughs> uh, that one does, yeah. But usually it doesn't. You might actually find one that's not all the way in. No, they all look good. Uh, I checked pretty much every one a couple of days ago. They look good. <laughs> now I can't get the other one. <laughs> Too good. It's all about the angle. So, a lot of people will just try to hit it like this. Right there, yeah. Okay. See it's the not gap? seated. You have that gap. You're not locked in. Cause you're not holding enough pressure for this to stay closed for it to clamp uh, together. Okay. So now I'm gonna support that. Closes that gap and your pin comes out to lock in. Nice. Okay, and now the one thing we were talking about up top, we we're talking about the sag in, on the on the floor here. Correct. So you'll so see you the sag here. The, see the big bolts? Okay, right here. That's so, where you want your sag to be, right at the bottom of them. Right. That's a good enough sag is what. Yeah, once we're... Once we're sagging right Once here at this bolt, you're good. You have too much sag, okay? You can just take a It'll cleat out. Or a, uh, than that, a half inch lower than that, and then you'll be like, all right, one cleat. Right. One, you can take a link out. out you can take a link out. out. But, but whatever you do to one side, you have you gotta to do, do the other side. Okay? And you also want to keep track between which cleats you're doing it. Correct. Yeah. So right. if, if we do it this time, it's between cleats two and three. Yeah. The next time so you want to go time. between three and four. Because just your saggings down here doesn't mean you immediately want to take it out from where you're at. Right. You want to okay. roll your chain and make sure even your spacings in between each cleat are Try the to same keep it as too. Even as you want to be as even. Yeah. Okay. Because the computer does see the cleat every so often, every so seconds, the system knows, hey, I see these cleats every 12 seconds, yeah. but on this one, I'm seeing it every 15 seconds, it'll try to fall because it thinks something's wrong. Yeah, okay. okay. So you always want to try to keep it as evenly spaced as possible when you're doing it. All right, so uh, we can release all of our e-stops. Uh, make sure here. the system is uh, clear. Could y'all kick on nicely? Yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, our disconnect is back on. Yeah. That's and uh, we uh, can have someone at top, someone at the bottom, we can do some testing. All right, team. All we're doing now is we're slowly, we've got it in the hand cleated and forward. All we're doing is checking to make sure it's not off, it's not enough center. We've got a man on top checking everything up top. We're just listening for things here. Okay. And what's nice about this one, yeah. you have all these cross member okay. bars that are going here that we use as a ladder, but you can look at your cleats and you can look at the bars on the cleats and the bars going horizontally and make sure that your cleat isn't uh, you know, left to right. So you can see right here, it's nice and straight as compared to the horizontal bars for the ladder that goes up. Sounds good. Well team, that wraps up this uh, video today. Big shout out to Vanstone for sending Andrew out to help us out with this install. Hope it helps somebody else. If you have questions, definitely email me or shoot me a message, comments. We can get you connected to the right people over at Vanstone if you have a conveyor like this. This is a hybrid. Um, if you have a regular one, that's fine. You can call us, we'll, we'll you know talk to us, we'll help you out. You can also, once again, call the Vanstone guys. They are always willing to help out. Thanks so much again, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. No problem, guys. All right, we'll see you on the next one. Take care, gents. Bye.